So having various people over to the shop, one of the things I noticed is that almost everybody that comes into the shop immediately hones in on my bandsaw. And to me, this is just how it looks. I've got all sorts of jigs and accessories that go along with it. But if you've just got a bandsaw that's stock straight the way you bought it from the factory, these are some great ideas of add-ons that you can do to your bandsaw to make it so much more useful. The first one we'll look at is a circle cutting jig and just with a few bits of hardware from your local woodworking store, you'll be able to easily build one too. So this jig will help you cut perfect circles at the bandsaw. Cut circles, so naturally what do we do? We make it square. Makes sense, right? There's just a couple basic components on the top and on the bottom of the jig. Let's start on the bottom and see how this rides on the cast iron saw. So the base of the jig is just three quarter inch ply and it's been edge banded with some T molding. It's got a metal runner. This is standard three quarter by three eighths miter bar. And then you'll need to add a hardwood fence at the back of the jig. On top of that, you'll add a bracket size to fit your bandsaw. And the idea is this bracket keeps the whole operation from tipping off the flat bed of the saw in use. The metal bracket on the bottom of the fence is just a stock item from a farm supply store, so it doesn't have to be anything too specific. The final item worth noting on the front of the fence here, we've got magnets. These are cup magnets from Rockler that are epoxied into the fence, and there's actually two of them. The idea there is they catch on the metal fence of the bandsaw and just hold it in position while you work. So those two features, the magnets and the metal bracket really hold things steady in place so you don't have to worry about the jig shifting on you as you're cutting the circle. And then the only feature you need to add on the top of the jig is just this combination track. This allows you a space for the miter slider as well as a recess for a tape measure so you can accurately set the radius of your circle. With a large screwdriver, this is infinitely adjustable all the way up to a radius of about 28 inches. And you just lock it in place and you're ready to drop your board over the center point screw and cut the circle. If you had a very small circle to cut, you could reverse this miter slider bar so that the center point could get even closer to the blade. Right now I need to cut a 12 inch circle, so I'll line the screw center point with the six inch mark and lock that in place. Okay, so the board's down on our center point. I have the jig backed out slightly. We'll just advance into the cut and start making the circle. Lift the scrap away and pull the jig back to retrieve your workpiece. So let's look at that miter slide track that goes with the combination track from Woodcraft. It just has a profile to it and you'll need to make a couple of modifications to make this work for the circle cutting jig. First, add a screw as a pivot point and you can reinforce that with a dab of epoxy on the bottom side. And then you'll need to drill a hole and with a bandsaw actually cut this relief slot. That in conjunction with this number three conical screw will allow the slider to splay and lock its position inside of the combo track. The way that works on the bottom is actually just with this common T-track hardware. Of course remember to add the eraser head back when you're done so you don't scratch your fingers. I don't know about you, but I like to hang jigs as high as possible out of reach. Next up is a small parts crosscut sled for your bandsaw. And this is super helpful if you've ever had to take a crosscut sled up to your table saw to do very small operations such as trimming dowels. It might be overkill on the table saw, but here's a perfect way to do those small cuts just at the bandsaw. And this sled has all the same components that you might find on a larger version of the table saw, just on a much smaller scale. In this case, there's a wooden miter bar runner, a little bit of paste wax, so keep that sliding well in the track. And then the base is made from half inch Baltic birch plywood, 
and coated with black formica. That, of course, is optional. For the fence system, it's just three quarter inch ply and a very common Craig top track. Luckily, you only need about a one foot length, so maybe you'll have enough laying around in the shop already. I like to use the production stop as opposed to the flip stop because it comes all the way down to the base of the jig and that'll make it work well for small parts like dowels. The third accessory we'll talk about for your bandsaw is a low fence with adjustable stop block. And as simple as this is, this has got to be my most used accessory for the bandsaw. I like to use a nice tall fence when I'm resawing, but problem is most of the time I'm not resawing. Usually I'm just making basic notching cuts or something that a lower profile fence is better for. And that's something that is hard to find on a bandsaw anymore. You can go with a, a stock upgraded fence from somebody like Craig, or you can just simply make your own. Well, the cross section tells the story here. This fence is built up from a lamination of hardwoods, and then it has slots or recesses cut on both sides to accept aluminum track. This one's just a simple miter track that would accept a stop block on the face of your fence, whereas this one is the mounting slot. This combination track is available from Woodcraft. One is sized for a miter bar slider, and the other one is just a simple T-track. As we slide this off, you can see how it's mounted. That's the track mounting slot. And these are the mounting tabs that replace the factory hardware on this bandsaw. So basically it mounts a lot like the stock fence. Of course, the main benefit of a lower fence is you can lower the guide blocks for safety. Another big benefit for me is that stop block so you can make quick and accurate notching cuts. And finally, we'll finish things up with a template cutting jig or sometimes called a template rub jig. And what this allows you to do is use the bandsaw to cut very close to your pattern when you're following a template and then finish things up at the router table. And this mounts on the same custom fence with that T-track slot. And you just use a combination of that adjustability fore and aft and then the fence adjustability left and right to set how much of a difference you want between your workpiece and the template. And that recess at the tip of the jig is key to what protects your workpiece. Just use double-sided woodworking tape like you would with any other template cutting project. Slotted holes in the jig where it mounts to the fence help you account for the varying thicknesses that you might come across with either your template or your workpiece. And that way you'll have a really thin, consistent difference between your workpiece and your template. And you can finish that up by sanding or just flush trimming at the router table. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. As always, I'll put links to hardware and anything we used in this specific video down in the description box. Plus, I'll give you links to some of my favorite bandsaws if you're in the market for a new power tool. Hit me with a thumbs up if you like today's topic. And remember to subscribe to the Thoughtful Woodworker channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Let's see, checklist, build circle cutting jig, build small parts crosscut sled, give Willie quick thumbs up on video, and of course subscribe to the Thoughtful Woodworker. And your to-do list today is done. I got one turntable and a lavalier microphone.